Hello there, students and friends. Welcome to the fourth sequel of my lecture series on inductance. Today's episode focuses on RLC series circuit. This is a type of circuit involving a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor connected in series. What happens to the charge of a capacitor when a changing current moves into an inductor and a resistor? Find out, stay tuned, watch and learn. In our past episode where we discuss LC or inductor capacitance circuit, okay, we assume that there was no resistance in the circuit. Of course, uh, such assumption is very ideal because in reality, every real inductor has resistance in its windings. And there may also be resistance in the connecting wires. So because of the resistance, the electromagnetic energy in the circuit is dissipated and converted to other forms such as internal energy of the circuit materials. Right? So, as shown here in this figure, uh, the circuit already has added to it a resistor. Right? Now, uh, as shown here, the capacitor is connected to the source of the EMF for it to be charged completely. All right? But when the switch is moved to the downward position, all right, the capacitor discharges through the resistor and the inductor. And suppose that the inductor has an inductance, capital L, and a resistor of resistance, capital R, uh, connected in series as shown. All right? Now, as the capacitor starts to uh, discharge, as soon as the circuit is completed, there is what we call loss or losses of energy in the resistor, all right, because of I squared R uh, energy losses. Hence, the magnetic field the magnetic field energy at the inductor acquires when the capacitor is completely discharged would be less than all right less than the original electric field energy of the capacitor now in the same way the energy of the capacitor when the magnetic field has decreased to zero will still be much less all right and so on now if the resistance r of the resistor is relatively small the circuit will still oscillate all right but the kind of oscillation now is described as damped harmonic motion and we say that uh, the circuit is under damp this is shown in figure 30.16 a and as you can see as time passes uh, the amount of charge q becomes less and less all right until finally it approaches zero so this is the kind of oscillation described as underdump. 
in an underdamped circuit. Now, for still larger values of R, the circuit becomes what we call overdump. Alright? Overdump if R increases and reaches a certain value, the, the circuit will no longer oscillate. We say that it is critically damped. So this is shown in uh, part B or letter B of the figure. As you can see, there is no more oscillation. All right? There is a sudden decrease in the charge until it becomes zero. Now, what happens if the value of R is still increased further? All right? Then, we say that the system, all right, or the oscillation is in an overdump uh, situation or the circuit is overdump. This happens if the value of R is very large. And as shown in the graph, there is a slow decrease in the amount of charge as time passes. So take note of the terms underdamped, all right, critically damped, and overdamped. These three illustrations illustrate those kinds of dumping. All right, so once again, let's look at the illustration shown in this figure uh, for an uh, RLC series circuit. So as shown, when the switch S is in the position, uh, upward position, all right, uh, the EMF charges the capacitor, right? So after some time, when the capacitor is fully charged, uh, the switch is moved to the downward position. All right? And at time zero, when the switch is flipped to the downward position, thereby removing the source from the circuit and placing the capacitor in series with the resistor and the inductor. Now, if the value of the resistance R is relatively small such that R squared will be less than 4L over C, the circuit is considered under damp as shown in figure 30.16A, where there are still oscillations. But as time passes, the oscillation fades out because the amount of charge in the capacitor becomes smaller and smaller. Alright? So, for an underdamped kind of oscillation or circuit, uh, we have this relationship between R squared and 4L over C. R squared is always less than 4L over C. Alright? There are still oscillations for small value of R, but as shown in graph A, uh, the amount of charge is diminishing until it reaches zero. Now, how do we determine the value of the charge Q at any given instant T? All right, so there is an equation, a derived equation for determining the value of small q at any given time t. Alright? So, it goes like this. Uh, the quantity capital A is a constant. So, that is multiplied to the Euler's number raised to the negative r over 2L uh, multiplied by t power. And then, that is to be multiplied by the cosine value of square root of 1 over LC minus r squared over 4L squared times the given time t plus the phase constant uh, angle phi. All right? Take note that in this equation, 
the quantity capital A and angle phi are both constants. And this is only for a case where there is oscillation but uh, the circuit is under damp. Okay, the value of the resistance is relatively small. All right. So once again, if the value of big R is not zero but has a relatively small value, we have a kind of oscillation that is considered under damp as shown in figure 30.16a. Likewise, if R is not zero, the angular frequency omega of the oscillation all right, is less than uh, what it should be square root of 1 over LC. And this is because of the inclusion of the uh, resistance big R. So we have a modified formula for the angular frequency uh, applicable only for an underdamp uh, type of oscillation. All right, we label it as uh, omega prime. All right. Omega prime is now equal to the square root of 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared. So we denote it here as equation 2. In this formula, the omega prime is less than uh, omega. All right. Remember, uh, square root of 1 over LC is actually, or was actually defined as the angular frequency omega in an uh, LC circuit. All right? So, how do we know if in an uh, RLC circuit, how do you know if there are oscillations or no oscillations? All right. So, we have this relationship between R squared and the value of 4L over C. If they are equal, the system is said to be in critical damping situation or it is critically damped as shown in uh, figure 30.16b. All right, where, as you can see, uh, it illustrates the uh, rapid decrease in the amount of charge all right. For a short period of time, the amount of charge Q is decreasing very uh, fast. So this, this is a situation where we say uh, the circuit is critically damped and that R squared is equal to 4L over C. All right. But uh, if the value of R is much higher, all right, then we say that the system or the circuit is overdamped as shown in figure 30.16c, where as differentiated from uh, the figure or the graph in letter B, okay, in letter C, we notice a gradual decrease in the value of the charge Q as time passes. So, when the square of the value of R is greater than 4L over C, we say that the system is already overdamped. All right? No oscillations. All right? Just like uh, in the definition for critical damping, no oscillations. Okay? The only difference is that when the circuit is overdamped, there is a a gradual decrease in the amount of charge as time passes. Whereas in uh, a critically damped circuit, okay, the decrease in the charge for a short period of time is as shown. There is a fast decrease in the charge. So, 
just remember if you want to determine uh, when do we say that in a given uh, RLC circuit will there be oscillations or no oscillations all right so we say that if r squared is greater than or equal to 4l over c all right uh, combining these two relationships if r squared is greater than or equal to 4l over c then definitely there will be no oscillations All right, there will only be an oscillation for an undamped or underdamped kind of circuit. All right, where the value of R squared is less than 4L over C, and that uh, the charge has an angular frequency defined by omega prime as given in equation number two. To check your understanding, we now have question number one. An RLC series circuit includes a 1 ohm, 1.0 ohm resistor. At time equals zero, the capacitor charge is 4.0 microcoulomb, for which of the following values of the inductance and capacitance will the charge on the capacitor not oscillate? Letter A. If the value of L is equal to 1.0 microhenry and the capacitance is equal to 12 microfarad, letter B, if L is equal to 2.0 microhenry and C is equal to 8.0 microfarad, or letter C, if the value of the inductance L equals 1.0 microhenry and the capacitance is equal to 1.0 microfarad. So we'll have the answer and solution to this question in just a short while. The key concept that we apply in this question is that there will be no oscillation if the value of R squared is greater than or equal to 4L over C. Now, in each case, A, B, and C, the value of R squared is equal to 1.0 ohm squared, and that is equal to 1.0 ohm squared. So, determining the value of 4L over C for each case in letter A, that would be equal to uh, 4 times the value of L, that means 4.0 microhenry, divided by 12 microfarad, and we will get uh, the value of 4L over C equal to 0 0.33 ohm squared. For option letter B, the value of 4L over C is equal to 4 times 2.0 microhenry or 8.0 microhenry divided by 8.0 microfarad, and that is equal to 1.0 ohm squared. And for option letter C, the value of 4L over C Again, it's equal to 4 times 1 micro, 1.0 microhenry, which is 4.0 microhenry divided by 1.0 microfarad or 4.0 ohm squared. So our conclusion, in case A, there are no oscillations because uh, the value of R squared, which is 1.0 ohm squared, is greater than 0 0.33 ohm squared. This is a kind of what we call overdump oscillation or overdump system. Now, in case letter B, still there are no oscillations because uh, the R squared value, 1.0 ohm squared, is just equal to the 4L over C value, 1.0 ohm squared. This is an example of a system that is critically damped. Finally, in option letter C, there are oscillations okay, because the value of R squared, 1.0 ohm squared, is less than 
4L over C, which is 4.0 ohm squared. And this is what we call a system that is underdamped. Question number two. An RLC series circuit has inductance 42.0 millihenry. The capacitance uh, is not given, so we label it as capital C, and the resistance, capital R, also is not given. These two variables are our target variables. Without the resistor, the angular frequency of oscillation is 624 radians per second. With the resistor, the angular frequency is 208 radians per second. Question, find the values of letter A, uh, the capacitance, and letter B, the resistance. So our solution, we first determine the angular frequency, omega, equals square root of 1 over LC. All right, this is uh, when there is no resistor uh, added to the circuit. All right, the value of omega is given 624 rod per second, and we are to determine our target variable is the capacitance C. So we first substitute square root of 1 over 42.0 times 10 to the negative 3 Henry. All right to be multiplied by capital C and equated to 624 radians per second. Isolating uh, the variable capital C, we will have this working equation where capital C is equal to 1 divided by 624 uh, radians per second to be squared, then multiplied by uh, 42.0 times 10 to the negative 3 Henry. All right. So doing our math, we will get the value of the capacitance big C equal to 61.0 to three significant figures raised to the negative 6 power farad. That is answer to letter A. In answering question letter B, uh, we make use of the formula omega prime equal to square root of 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared. So our target variable for question letter B is uh, the resistance big R. Since we are given uh, the angular frequency, if there is a resistor added to the circuit. All right? So the angular frequency, the, uh, omega prime, is 208 radians per second. So we equate that to the square root of uh, 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared. Okay? For simplicity, uh, we don't include the units first, all right, so we'll have 1 over 42.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, that's understood to be the inductance uh, expressed in Henry. And then multiplied by 61.0 times 10 to the negative 6 farad. This is the value of the capacitance we calculated in letter A minus the target variable R to be squared, then divided by 4 times uh, the inductance, 42.0 times 10 to the negative 3 to be squared. Okay? So isolating the resistance R, we'll have this later because we first uh, simplify. All right? We first simplify to get rid of the radical sign, uh, both sides of the equation are squared, all right? That means 208 uh, radian per second to be squared, and we get 4.33 times 10 to the fourth power uh, rad squared 
per second squared. Right? The right side of the equation, when squared, will eliminate the radical sign, but the values inside will, will remain. All right? But we already multiplied uh, the value of the inductance L and the capacitance C. And their product is 2.56 times 10 to the negative 6. All right? Henry Farad. And then, uh, the product of 4L squared, where L is 42.0 times 10 to the negative 3, then to be squared, then times 4, that results to 7.06 times 10 to the negative 3 Henry squared. Again, isolating the resistance R a little later, that is, because what happens here is we first get the reciprocal, all right, or 1 over 2.56 times 10 to the negative 6 Henry Farad. If you get the reciprocal of that, you'll get 3.91 times 10 to the pip per Henry Farad. All right, now this term here as S, and I think you're about to isolate. The resistance R. There you go. So R squared, okay, uh, will just be equal to the quantity 3.91 times 10 to the pip, okay, per Henry Farad. All right. That's this actually is what we have here. All right. And then the quantity on the left side is moved to the right side, so it becomes minus 4.33 times 10 to the fourth rad squared or radian squared per second squared, right? And uh, 706 or 7.06 times 10 to the negative 3 Henry squared has been uh, transferred also uh, to this side of the equation, all right? So, what do we have next? All right, further simplification, we'll have R squared equal to, okay? I think uh, the result of, the result of, uh, Multiplying this two, all right, these two quantities, and then subtracting it from, uh, or it's simply equal to 306, all right? Or it's actually multiplying 7.06 times 10 to the negative 3 Henry squared. You distribute it because there is a parenthesis here. You multiply it to 3.91 times 10 to the pip, and what we get is 2.76 times 10 to the third. All right? Uh, for simplicity, we get rid of the units for the meantime, minus this number, 4.33 times 10 to the fourth radian squared per second, multiplied by 7.06 raised to the negative 3 Henry squared, their product would be 306, right? Uh, with the unit uh, excluded for the meantime. So, R squared would just be equal to the difference between 2.76 times 10 to the third power minus 306. And lastly, getting the value of R, we will have the resistance big R equals 49.5 ohms. And that is the answer to question letter B. Down to our last question, number three. An RLC series circuit 
has an inductance capital L equals 0 0.400 Henry, Cap capacitance capital C equals 7.00 microfarad, and big R or resistance equals 320 ohms. At time equals zero, the current is zero, and the initial charge on the capacitor is 2.0. 80 times 10 to the negative 4 coulomb. Question letter A. What are the values of the constants capital A and uh, angle phi given in equation 1? Alright. So, you may refer back to equation 1. Question letter B. How much time does it take for each complete current oscillation after the switch in the circuit is closed and question letter c what is the charge on the capaci capacitor after the first complete current oscillation all right this is uh, the equation for finding the value of the small q at any given time t all right earlier this was noted as equation number one, all right, where uh, capital A and angle P are constants, and they are our target variables for question letter A. All right, in our discussion about uh, electrical oscillation, where uh, we have the case current is zero and the capacitor has the maximum charge big Q. All right? So at time equals zero, where the current is also zero, but uh, the capacitor has its maximum charge big Q equal to what's given here. 2.80 times 10 to the negative or column, we say that the phase constant or angle P must be equal to zero. All right? And for determining the constant capital A, okay, we will see the solution in just a short while. All right, to find the constant, capital A, uh, we base it on this equation for small q. But we will let the time t equals zero. If we do that and then isolate the constant, capital A, it simply becomes A equals big Q, which is the maximum charge of the capacitor, to be divided by the cosine of the square root of 1 over LC. Uh, this is also because our phase angle phi is also equal to 0. So using this as our working equation for finding uh, the constant capital A, when we substitute, we have 2.80 times 10 to the negative 4 coulomb to be divided by the cosine of the square root of 1 over uh, the product of the inductance L and the capacitance C. And simplifying, we get this value. All right? Uh, 2.80 times 10 to the negative 4 uh, Coulomb is in fact the maximum uh, charge in the capacitance or in the capacitor. All right. Mathematically, the cosine of uh, the cosine of the square root of one over LC is actually equal to one, or almost equal to one. That's the reason why uh, the constant capital A is just numerically equal to the maximum charge big Q. 
And moving on to question letter B, which is asking for the time at what instant uh, is the first complete oscillation. Meaning, we are looking for the period of oscillation capital T. So, we base it from determining the angular frequency omega prime. Alright? And then relate it later to the period capital T. So, we will first substitute. Omega prime is just equal to the square root of uh, 1 over LC. Right? Minus uh, R squared over 4L squared. So, minus, that's minus 320 ohms to be squared divided by 4 times the given uh, inductance 0 0.400 Henry to be squared. And simplifying, we get the value of omega prime, all right? Which is, further simplification, it will be equal to 444 radians per second. And relating this to the period, capital T, where the period is just equal to 2 pi divided by the angular frequency omega prime. Substituting, we have 2 pi divided by 444 radians per second. So that the period capital T is equal to 0 0.0142 seconds. So that's the answer to question letter B. The first complete oscillation, all right, is at time T is equal to 0 0.0142 seconds. And for the final question, letter C, we're looking for the small charge Q at that given time computed in letter B. All right, so still using equation number one, but we'll do it parts by parts, all right? We will first determine the power of the Euler's number r over 2l multiplied by the given time t substituting we have 320 this uh, given resistance in ohms divided by twice the product of the inductance which is uh, 0 0.800 henry then multiplied by the given time or the calculated time 0 0.0142 seconds Doing our math, we will get that value equal to 5.68. So that becomes uh, the power of the Euler's number, which we can now express as 2.80 times 10 to the negative 4. This is the, comp the computed value of A. All right. Then multiplied by the Euler's number raised to the power negative 5.68. Using your scientific calculator, we will get the value 9.56 times 10 to the negative 7. And the other part of equation number 1, determine the angle uh, square root of 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared multiplied by the computed time T, substituting. Although actually we already got the value for the uh, quantity inside the radical. Uh, which is, in fact, the value for the omega prime, and that is 444 rad radians per second. We just multiply it by the computed time, 0 0.0142 seconds, and we will get, all right, this value, 6.30 radians. So finally, we can now calculate uh, the value of small q, right? Uh, 9.56 times 10 to the negative 7. That's the number that we got here. All right. And then multiplied by the cosine of the angle 6.30 radians. So doing our math, we will get the value for Q, which is 9.56 times 10 to the negative 7 coulomb. So compare this with the original value of Q. There is indeed a big uh, decrease in the amount of the charge. And this is all because 
uh, the effect of the energy that's being lost due to the presence of the resistance or resistor. The energy uh, that's dissipated in the form of internal energy. So, we are done with our video tutorial. Thank you very much as usual for your indulgence.